about what was the chance of fine oil. And I have to tell you that to drill one oil well usually costs about maybe 50 million pounds. It's a lot of money, and so you don't want to waste your money. But most of the time, only one well in five actually finds every oil. And so part of my job is estimating what's the chance. And if the chance is only one in 20, then probably we wouldn't do it. But if the chance is one in two or one in four, then it's quite attractive. And hopefully when we find one oil field, it's big enough to pay for the other four wells that we drilled that didn't find anything. Once uh, I went to a school and gave a talk and uh, I showed this picture and I said, well, what do you think that is? And they said, well, it looks like a shack. And uh, yeah, I was a little bit upset because that's where I, I grew up. Um, I was born in, in St. Lucia and uh, my great grandparents brought me up. And uh, this is where I grew up for the first, uh, I lived for the first 11 years of my life until I, I came to Britain. Um, but here I am, standing in front of you as a geologist um, in a very successful career, uh, which illustrates that if you're determined, then you can achieve anything that you want to. And success really is in the mind. And if you believe you can do it, then you can get there. I came to Britain, um, I studied, I lived with my mother, who is a, a single parent, and you know, I was on you know, school, school meals, and uh, you know, clothes from the second-hand shop, and all that stuff. But it didn't stop me. It didn't stop me, and on the, the left there, that's me very proudly standing there with my mother the day I graduated. I went to university, I studied geology for three years, and I earned a, a, an honours degree, which allowed me to get a job at an oil company. So what that means is Africa has to send some of its oil abroad or to other places to be refined, which costs more money, and therefore Africa is not getting as much of a profit as it should. Looking at um, African energy consumption, most of the energy that people use in Africa actually comes from wood and uh, animal dung and that sort of thing. 15% from oil, 10% from coal, and a little bit from gas. The coal reserves are generally in the south, down in South Africa. The gas reserves are up in the north, in Algeria, Tunisia, uh, up there. And we've worked in the industry for about 20 years, and I've probably come across about 20 black geologists. And so it's been lonely at times, actually. And um, it, it's nice to be in a profession where there are other of your people involved. If you go into law, for example, there's a lot of black lawyers, a lot of black doctors, a lot of black nurses, not many black geologists. But increasingly in Africa, we see that more African countries are finding oil. And I went to an African conference in, in Houston, in Texas, and I was absolutely thrilled because I met more black geologists in one day than I had in the previous 19 years. Um, so there are, there are some black women uh, geologists, but not many. But don't let that put you off, because as I say, if I'd taken that attitude um, 20 years ago when I was going to study geology, then I wouldn't be here standing in front of you. And hopefully, the fact that I'm here will inspire some of you to go into it. And the second question you had about um, doctors owe 250,000 pounds. No, um, we don't know that much. I think for a graduate who's just finished a degree would start would have a starting salary of probably about um, 27, 30,000 pounds. Not bad, eh? <laughs> so we have another question. <laughs> Um, that's a good question. Was I encouraged or discouraged? I, when I studied at, at university, I had a, a good degree and I had a, a fair amount of self-confidence, which I had at the time. Um, that's waxed and waned over the years. I'm standing here very confident in front of you, but you know, it's it's not always an easy ride. Right. But I did get into BP, which was a very large company and had a very good graduate training program, and. That allowed me to get a very good training so that I could um, progress in my career. But I think with any profession, it can be difficult. But you have, you have to be determined that you will get in. Go to the diamonds. Yeah. What inspired you to be a Okay, that's a that's a very good question. Thank you. I I was at school and I was um, 
I was studying, I did my GCSEs or O levels as we call them then, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. And when I got to 18, I'd done A levels, I'd done, I think, chemistry, physics, and maths, and I thought, mm, what should I do? I took a year off because I was tired of taking exams. And in that year off, I just found myself going to the library and taking books out. And I was interested in physical geography, you know, how rivers and things form. And gradually, I wanted to know what was underneath, what was causing the rivers to be there, and the, the, the hills and the mountains. And I just started reading more and more um, about geology. And I applied to the university to do chemistry because it was my best subject at school. I had no more idea. So I thought, well, I'll my best. So I did chemistry and geology. And by halfway through the first year, I fall in love with geology. And um, it's the curiosity. What drives me is the curiosity. I always want to learn more about it. And there's always more to learn. I think maybe time for a couple more questions, then we'll have to wrap up. Thinking about the, the, future, of, the future of geology, and um, some of the issues around how much oil is left and how much gas is left. What are some of the future issues for our future geologists? Okay, that's a, that's a good question. That's a good question. And I think the future is bright. The future for geology is bright. There's a lot of technology now. There's a lot of computing power. And all that allows you to do is to process more data, to cover more ground. But it still takes the intellectual, the human involvement, it still takes the human imagination to think, well, oil has been found here and there, but where else can we look for it? What other forms does it take? Where else uh, can, can we look? I think that happens that many do. Every single, every single port, like we're up in North and South London, running our mentor programs for young people, with no cost to them um, to help our community. That's the sort of thing that we do. So when we ask you for donation, you know the nation's going to help fund events like that. It's going to help fund um, 